And so, 2020 is over. It is now 2021, and I cannot think of any better video to start the year off than my top 10 worst anime of 2020. Now, some of you may be saying, well, what about top 10s usually do for things like Yu-Gi-Oh! and movies and all that good stuff? Well, because it was this past year, uh, I didn't really keep up with those things as much as I would have, or at least enough to make a whole video about it. And so, therefore, anime was kind of the only real thing I followed this year. Uh, take that how you will. Uh, so what? What else would you want? Top 10, like, Power Rangers Lightning Collection figures? Top 10 Gunpla I built? I, I could do those things. It's been, it's been a very strange, weird year for me. It's, it's very sad. But! Today, we are here to talk about something either, even worse than my misery. We're here to talk about the things that caused that misery. That's right. These are shows I didn't like. And before we get really into it, I should probably start this list off with a few disclaimers. First and foremost, I did not watch everything that came out in 2020. I actually, this is the least amount of anime I've watched in a long time, uh, in part due to so many shows getting delayed and then picking back up and then uh, starting off new shows that got new seasons and all that good stuff. Uh, so yeah, there's not as many things here as normal. And also, I don't have a ton of free time in my hands, even with the pandemic going on. So I can't really pick a show to watch to hate watch. Like, oh, big shocker, the shitty Netflix Dragon's Dogma adaptation is better. Oh, the show about a dude cheating on his fiance with ogre girls was bad. Yeah, no fucking shit. <laughs> I wasn't going to watch those. I'm not dedicating my precious little TV time to that shit. So, these are all shows that many of you will say aren't actually the worst, and they're not. But that's kind of the problem with them, is these are shows that I thought looked promising, genuinely could be good, and could entertain me, and they just fell flat. Now, I don't hate most of these shows. I'll uh, tell you when we start getting into things I really didn't like. The first few of these are mostly just disappointments than anything else. But yeah, no, this is how I feel, and this is what 2020 in anime was for me. So without further ado, let's get started. Coming in at number 10 is a show I found myself defending throughout most of its airtime, and that is Listeners. Listeners was a show that went under the radar for most, but for a lot of people, they were really excited. It's a mech show. We don't get those as much as we used to. It had a ton of classic rock. It had a beautiful visual style, reminiscent of Eureka 7 and other uh, classics. And to be honest, I still was moderately entertained. But for a show with this awesome a soundtrack, this cool a visual direction, and this fun a premise, yeah, this really misses the marks in a lot of spot. It settles for being basically about as generic as humanly possible, which is just kind of sad because there was so much fun here and so much potential. So to see it get kind of wasted was probably the worst thing about this show. Coming in at number nine is a show that many people actually loved and many people thought was the hailing of a new age of late stage capitalism. And this is a show I thought was just kind of eh. It's Rent-A-Girlfriend. That's right, you probably knew this show for having some of the hottest girls in the summer anime season. I knew it as a mostly okay comedy that kind of just doesn't really do anything with its premise. Like, for all people's complaining about this show, it plays it so fucking safe. Like, if you're gonna do this show about a weirdo idiot who's going to, like, basically get a low-stage prostitute, I feel like you could either go really mean with it, or if you want to go really emotional, you can do that. And I'm told the manga, as it goes, does get a little more deeper and try to be a little bit more about something, but this first season just really, really wanted you to think these girls were hot, and to buy merch, and I think they were even legit wearing the latest fashions in Japanese fashion magazines, and it just resulted in a show that, to me, like, was mostly just whatever. Like, even the best laughs in the show were usually followed by me going, okay, whatever. And for me, that's just how I'm gonna remember this one. 
So one of the things that really sold me on the first season of Ascendance of a Bookworm was how it just sort of like avoids a lot of the isekai tropes. It had really smart world building. It knew how to utilize its characters really fun. So it was really sad to see that season two did none of this. People still enjoyed season two, but for me, this was everything I hate about isekais. The world building takes a huge nosedive because we spend the entire season in a church dealing with pretty generic church problems, pretty generic church storyline bad guys. Um, most of the characters from season one are just not around, and when they are, they're doing boring shit. And these new characters are okay but they're very one note and not nearly as fun and like that's how i sort of sum up this season like yeah there's a lot of neat through lines within it but none of the things that really grabbed me or entertained me were here now i'm still gonna check out season three because i think that's already confirmed but yeah no this was just a big disappointment up next is one of those weird anime where i kind of appreciate it but also kind of not like it and that is gleipner Gleipner is like a really weird horror shonen action thing. It tries to be funny and it, it's got okay humor. It really tries to be sexy. And I remember the main girl from the show is like everyone's waifu for the spring season. And fair enough, she's hot. But this is one of those shows where... In the same way Ascendance succeeded at trying to avoid its tropes, this one also tries to avoid a lot of the pitfalls of sort of these horror survival type animes, but I feel like in doing so it kind of lost anything relating to a real identity. Like, it's not scary enough to really be horror, the action's good, but there's not as much of it as there really should be, the characters aren't that interesting. There's a couple interesting through lines for out, but of course the first season ends in a way that is trying to build first season and season and season to come, and yeah, it's just one of those shows there just wasn't really a lot to latch onto besides just titties. Coming in at number six, oh god, I'm gonna get heat for this, but number six is Somali and the Forest Spirit. Holy fucking shit! <laughs> like, oh my god! God, look, it's not bad. A lot of people like this. A lot of people are like, oh, Somali's so cute. And the idea of, like, a golem voiced by Jotaro trying to, like, take care of her. It's interesting. And there's interesting stuff throughout. But this was so corny and so just, like, in your face. Oh, Jesus. At one point, he literally says, I want to protect Somali's smile. It's so fucking cringe. You, of course, get the boring generic thing of, oh, the humans are actually the bad guys. The humans are the problem. They're the ones who uh, killed the beasts, and the, that's the reason the beasts hate them and whatever. <laughs> It's the most generic shit. Like, remember when that was a fresh idea that humans are actually the bad guys? No, because it's been too fucking long. <laughs> and then, of course, naturally, oh, humans are bad, but not Somali. She's so perfect. She's so cute. She's adorable. She calls him daddy. Please, Japanese people, make babies. <laughs> we need a new population. <sighs> I'm sorry, people who like this. Uh, a lot of the world building, besides the human shit's good. The designs are interesting. There's a lot to like here. It's just, oh, God, and that ending just pissed me off so much. Even if this is not as bad as the last couple things in here, it gets this high for because of just how goddamn obnoxious it was is enough to really piss me off. Coming in at number four, oh god, this one was such a letdown. I really was looking forward to this. I really actually enjoyed the first two episodes, but it's gotta go here. Number four is Inspector. Oh god, the main character of this show is so much fun and so delightful and entertainingly insane, and she's enough to carry a show. She really could. But she's not enough to carry this show. Her love interest is super boring. His ex is super boring. The world is super boring. 
And what sold you on the show is that it seemed like this was going to be just like a paranormal Monster of the Week detective show. You'd get to see this character do all this fun, cool stuff and take on all these fun, cool bad guys. Nope. We do one thing. We have one case that takes up almost this entire first season. A case that is so linear and so boring to watch happen, it ruins this whole show so badly. Like, even the way they beat the villain is actually interesting, but everything that goes from, like, episode 3 to the end of 12 is just pure sleep-inducing boredom. So for number 4, it feels like every year there's one comedy anime that everyone loves everyone's talking about it everyone enjoys it everyone has a great time and i just don't laugh at anything in it <laughs> and this year it is by far my next life as a villainous all routes lead to do i didn't see it <laughs> everyone loved this i couldn't stand it everyone's like oh the main character she's so funny she's so fucking annoying <laughs> I did not like her at all. All the side characters fall flat. The only one I enjoyed was the redhead with big titties, but that's because she's a redhead with big titties. Uh, the animation is generic. The character designs are hot, but they don't really amount to much. The plot is boring, overly dragged out, but somehow at the same time almost being non-existent. I can't even describe it. I didn't even like the acting in this. Just nothing about this was funny. Nothing really stood out. It's just another isekai. And like its premise is interesting, but what's really bad is these are starting to reach the point where there's no needed explanation for why any of this shit is happening. So the whole time I'm just like, what is going on? And the show's not funny enough to distract me from the lack of anything cohesive about it. Like, if you want to watch a funny isekai, just rewatch Konosuba. You'll get much more out of it. So from this point forward, we get out of the realm of disappointing and let downy, and now these are things I really did not like. <laughs> Number three is Sing Yesterday for Me. Let me set the scene for you. When this show came out, everyone got excited. Everyone was really looking forward to it, and everyone thought it was really going to connect to us, mostly young adults with no lives. Because this is a show about a young adult with no life. He's not anywhere he wants to be in life. We all thought we would relate to this. And the first few episodes are very relatable and definitely what sold people. But then, like, it just turns into being about a really bad love triangle. Like, seriously, he gets the job he wants, and it's never brought up again. And, like, everything is just now this love triangle. And after a certain point, the main guy in this show is really unlikable and really annoying and treats this, the clearly better girl, like shit. <laughs> So that way he can get with his boring high school friend who's got her own boring, annoying Gen Z love interest. You just want to punch in the face. Everyone is hateable. Even the only likable girl gets kind of annoyed. She's like, why are you into this guy? It's bad. It's boring. Nothing goes on in it. And I think everyone collectively was pissed off by the time it was over. I want to make something very clear. Number two is technically a worse show than number one. <laughs> I'm fully acknowledging this. But Noblesse is one of the most fascinatingly bad shows I've watched in a very long time. This is a show where there is not a single creative decision that works on any fundamental level. Everything from the characters to the story to the animation <laughs> is so broken and convolutedly bad. I was legitimately entertained. <laughs> I shouldn't be, because to most of the world, this was boring as fuck. And it is. <laughs> But where so many of the other shows on this list are boring because they're just middling, this is boring because it's legitimate bad decision making. 
There's not a single competent idea in this show. And something about that after a while, maybe I had just broken down at that point. Like, maybe I was just so Stockholm syndrome for this show that I kind of had fun. Like, it's bad. It is legitimately the worst. I don't care what anyone else says the worst show of the year is. This is worse. This is legitimately an awful show. But, uh, I don't know. It's number two. And number one is... Okay, look. Look, 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 look. Number one, like I said, is not as bad as Noblesse. It is n probably not as bad as what you think the worst anime of the year is. Number one is here because nothing else left me more miserable and just made me depressed and worrisome of where the anime genre is going. And number one is The Eighth Son, Are You Kidding Me? Now many of you are saying, it's just another isekai. It's another generic isekai. It's whatever. Why'd you even bother? Well, I bothered because this was fairly popular. Um, so what makes it so much worse than anything else? Well, the big thing about this show is there's no effort at all. I don't think anyone cared making this. At least with Noblesse, as bad as it is, I think the people working on it wanted to do something. I just think they didn't know how to do it. This is a show that is literally nothing but isekai cliches, and it doesn't care. It doesn't want to, like, do anything new with it. It doesn't want to present anything in a different light. The main character literally just blinks, and he's in the other world, cause just like Subaru. He's at the bottom, like... They all fucking are, but within, like, two episodes, he's the most overpowered thing on the planet. He's got a bunch of boring, uninteresting girls who are all just starting to look the same who are in love with him, and they just go on badly animated, generically boring adventures for 12 episodes. All the actors in this are bad. Maybe, like, the blue-haired girl is okay, but none of them get into it, but there's just nothing to get into it. The world building is generic, and, like, the music is bad. <laughs> like... Everything about this is just so on autopilot, and that's really why it just made me feel so shitty. Like, every episode of this just reminded you that, like, anime at its worst is a machine. It is a machine to push out crap for you to buy other crap, buy the light novels, buy tie-in merch, like, keep watching, like, all this shit, that's all this show is. It doesn't respect the audience, it doesn't care about anything. I don't know why it was made other than isekais are popular. And this is, if, if you like isekais, and if you're wondering why everyone's always hating on them, fair enough, a lot of them get more hate than they deserve. But if you want to know the embodiment of why we hate them as a community, this is it. This is literally just isekai creates isekai. <laughs> this is like incest the isekai. <laughs> I don't even know where I'm going anymore with this. So yeah, that was uh, the worst things I watched in 2020. Many of you are probably like, none of these are that bad, and you're probably right. <laughs> but these were the things I watched this year that I didn't like, and I didn't like them because I genuinely believed at some point everything on this list had the potential to be good, rather because it was based on good source material or was getting good enough ratings for me to think people knew what they were talking about or just anything along those lines. Something at some point went wrong with these productions, and it is my duty to tell you all about that, which I have done, so now I'm going to go to bed. So, yeah, that was uh, the worst of the year. Obviously, we will finish things off with the best of the year, which I do hope to get out pretty soon. That one's all mapped out. So, yeah, that is all. And as always, click to like, click to subscribe, and join me for hopefully much better anime in 2021.